Can I have some gummy worms, Mommy? No, Juliet, we only have money for instant noodles today. And besides, gummy worms are bad for your teeth. But I like them, Mommy. When I was a toddler, I always gave my mom a hard time in the store. I didn't really understand that we were poor and what it really meant when people lived in a trailer park. I thought they were just fun, cool boxes and we were all just one big happy family. Everyone loved me there. I think I was everyone's favorite kid. The thing they loved most about me though was my hair. It was soft, golden, and looked exactly like the perfect hair in the shampoo commercials, even though we had no money for hair products most of the time. The strangest thing about my hair was that it wouldn't stop growing. While most babies were born looking like bald-headed aliens, I was born with a perfect head of hair. By the time I was a week old, my hair was longer than I was. My mom would have to cut it off every morning after my bath, but by the next day, it would have already grown back. Eventually, I used my hair to take us out of the trailer park and into Beverly Hills, but you have to keep watching to find out how. No one knew why my hair kept growing and growing. Sometimes my mom would let it get really long for fun, and this was exciting for everyone in the trailer park. The women liked to try different silly hairstyles on me. Or sometimes they'd let the neighborhood kids play games with it. I'd stand in the middle of five trees, then they'd part my hair into five and tie each part to a tree. Then they'd just play limbo with it or find something else silly to do. I didn't mind because it was fun for me too. My best friend was Jason. We were the same age and as we got older, we started to understand that we were both poor. Our parents sent us to school for the first time when we were already seven years old. We should have been in the second grade, but we had to sit in kindergarten with all the little kids because we didn't know how to read or write. It was embarrassing because the kids our age would always tease us at recess. School was just a horrible experience overall. They called us names like the Trailer Park Kids and Mr. and Mrs. Hillbilly. It didn't help that we only had about three outfits and one pair of old shoes. Years passed at that horrible school and we never managed to get above 40% in anything. What made it worse was that our parents couldn't always afford to send us there. And that's why we missed out on a lot. So when we were almost teenagers, we decided that we'd look for ways to make some extra money. We started by raiding the fruit trees of people who lived in nicer neighborhoods. Then we'd sell the fruits to random strangers who passed us on the road. This brought in a bit of money, but not enough, obviously. There's only so much you can make selling stolen apples and oranges. By this time, my parents had two other children, and although my dad worked, it was still really hard to get by. What do you think we should do? Well, if we can make money selling fruits we stole, I'm sure we can make money selling other things. Like what? Jewelry, electronics, that kind of stuff. But where would we get that? Well, we aren't going to school and most people aren't at home during the day. We're still pretty small so we can sneak in and out easily. Stealing seems so wrong, though. But is it fair that some people have everything while we have nothing? If we steal something, they can just buy a new one the next day. When we sell what we steal, we make sure our parents have food for our little brothers and sisters. I guess you're right. The next day, we started breaking into people's houses. At first, we'd just steal little things like toasters and irons, but eventually we started to steal bigger things too. Jason had a friend around the corner called Carlos. He was much older than we were and I think he was part of a gang. Anyway, he'd buy the things from us and I guess his gang arranged to sell them for more money to make a profit. We became like his workers and he kept encouraging us to steal bigger things. Jason and I were able to make life a bit easier for our parents. I think they had an idea that we were up to no good, but they didn't ask questions because they really needed the money. Then one day, Carlos had an idea. Let's rob that bodega down the street. Rob a whole store? How? No, stupid. We're just going to take the cash. We'll split it evenly. Three ways, just between the three of us. But how are we going to do that? We don't have any weapons or anything like that. I do. Carlos winked. I don't know why, but this whole idea had me more freaked out than usual. I was scared, and I'm not sure if that fear made any sense because I'd already robbed stuff from so many houses by then. But I decided to go through with it anyway because we were guaranteed to get at least $1,000 each. And that was a whole lot of money for me. Carlos told us his plan and we followed along. He was supposed to show his weapon, which turned out to be a baseball bat, to the cashier while we took all the money and put it into a bag. Then we'd run out of the store and celebrate when we got to our hideout. We'd count the money, divide it, and go home. But that was not how it worked out at all. We got into the bodega, and Carlos began threatening the cashier. As I moved to the cash register to collect the money, I saw two huge men behind Carlos. Drop your weapon! We're cops! Drop the weapon and we won't hurt you! 
Carlos looked defeated and surrendered. All three of us were taken downtown to the police station. I started crying and Jason tried to comfort me. Carlos was arrested and sent to prison because he was an adult. Jason and I were kept in the station until our parents got there. Jason got to go back home, but somehow it was decided that my parents were neglecting me and that's why I had to resort to stealing. A social worker was brought in and she made the decision for me to be taken away from my family and placed in foster care. You can't be serious! Don't take our baby girl away from us! I don't want to go! I want to stay with my family! The decision is final, we already have a place for her! Don't worry, Juliet, your life is going to improve. I cried, begged, and pleaded, but she would not change her mind. I was taken away and brought to my foster family's home that night. They were a weird bunch, and I refused to speak to them. Linda and Mario were the mom and dad, but they honestly looked like they could be brother and sister. They were short and fat with black hair, brown eyes, and freckles. They had two boys who looked just like them. I didn't fit in at all with my hazel eyes and gold hair. I'm Todd. I'm Ronald. Do you want anything to eat? We have lots of sausages. Your hair is so pretty. I guess you don't feel like talking. Well, we'll show you to your room. You'll have a room all to yourself. We've been waiting for the system to send us a girl for a while now, so it's all decorated with beautiful pink things. We hope you like it. I'm sure you didn't have all of this amazing stuff in the trailer park. I wanted to push Linda out of the window. Yes, the room was beautiful, but I didn't appreciate her talking about my real home like that. I got into bed and she closed the door. The next morning, I woke up hearing voices around me. Whoa! Amazing. I opened my eyes and screamed. Todd and Ronald were standing over me. What are you doing in here? Creeps! Mom and Dad told me to wake you up for breakfast, but then we saw... Your hair. It wasn't this long when you got here. Amazing. It's so beautiful. You're both creeps. Leave me alone. I was so upset about what happened the night before that I'd forgotten about my hair. I decided I couldn't keep it a secret from them anyway, so I just went to breakfast with my hair swinging next to my knees. Wow, Julia, that's some amazing hair you have. Was it this long last night? Uh, no. Wow, it talks! It was a Saturday, so we just stayed home and these four weirdos kept trying to talk to me. I just wanted to go back to my parents, and most times I wanted to burst into tears. But I kept strong. They forced me to go to school the next week. I was put in a ninth grade class and trust me when I say that this experience was even worse than getting picked up by the cops for trying to rob a store. Everyone treated me like I was contaminated and I understood absolutely nothing. I couldn't read that well, and maths was a nightmare. So this nightmare went on for about a month, and living with Linda and Mario wasn't as horrible as school until I found out they'd been stealing my hair. Every morning I used to cut off a bit of my hair before school, and I'd throw it in a little trash can in my room. I used to think that Linda just threw everything away into the regular trash, but one night I heard them talking in the living room, and I was horrified. It was about midnight when everyone was supposed to be asleep. I left my room to get something from the kitchen when I heard them talking. So the lab test determined some of the strands of her hair actually contained diamond particles. I don't know how it's possible. It makes no sense, but they already identified a place that would buy it. They wanted me to bring her in so they could conduct some tests, but I said no. It'd be better to just cut her hair every time it grows and sell it. I don't think she wants to become a lab rat. Plus, she never has to know. Just take the stuff out of her trash can every day. We could be filthy rich. Not so loud. You're going to wake everyone up. Ugh, despicable, I thought, but hearing that conversation was about to save my life. The next day, I pretended I was going to school. I hid in the bushes until I was sure they'd left the house to go to work. Then I went to their bedroom to look around. I wanted the address of the company that would buy my hair. I went through all their drawers until I found an envelope with a big diamond drawn on the top. I shoved it into my pocket and ran out of the house. I ran and ran until I reached the trailer park. I went through the front door and screamed, Mom! Dad! I'm home! They came running out. Darling, I'm so happy to see you. But you're not supposed to be here. We could all get into big trouble. Just let me hide here. Listen, I have something very important to tell you. I told them all about the company that would buy my hair, and I gave them the envelope. My dad opened it and started reading the contents. It looks legit. And you were saying this Linda and Mario dude were going to sell your hair to make themselves rich? Well, we can just use this for ourselves. Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking. Okay, dear, but I don't know if it's safe for you to hide here. I'll ask Mrs. Wilson next door if you could stay there for a while. I don't think the police would search her trailer. I hid out in Mrs. Wilson's trailer for a few days, 
We heard on the news that Linda and Mario had filed a missing persons report, but somehow the police never came to search the trailer park. My dad tried to sell some of my hair, and when he came home with $10,000 one day, we all nearly fainted. Our lives are about to change. Definitely, but only if Juliet agrees to let us continue selling her hair. Of course! In a few months, we had enough money to buy a huge mansion in Beverly Hills. After my parents paid for it in full, I turned myself into the cops and told them I'd run away from my foster parents. My biological parents were called in and they made the case that they were financially stable now and could afford to take care of me. The social worker came to tour our mansion and she nearly fainted. So my parents were allowed to keep me. My mom just finished her master's degree in finance and my dad is working on becoming a certified mechanic. My brother and sister have the life I wish I had when I was a kid and I'm happy I could have done that for them. They go to great schools, they have great rooms, and I always make sure they have the best toys and latest gadgets. Oh, and do you think I forgot about Jason? Because I didn't! He lives in the house next to mine, and we're working together to create a business. We're experimenting with different ideas, but I think we'll find our thing soon. My boyfriend is a gold digger. My name is Allegra, and I've been dealing with my gold digging boyfriend for far too long. That's why I broke up with him last night. He says I'll come crawling back to him, but let me tell you I'm so happy I finally got rid of him. He didn't seem petty and superficial when we first met. Actually, he was perfect for me. Now I realize he was just putting up an act. I come from a wealthy family and I've always been pampered by my parents. Money was never an issue. I went to the best schools growing up and had lavish vacations three times a year. My closet was, and still is, filled with the latest designer clothes. I got my dream car for my 16th birthday and had my own credit card since I was a child. The thing is, I love my parents to bits. I'm not one of those conceited, spoiled brats who stomp their feet on the ground and demand gifts. I'm very grateful for everything my folks do for me and we have an amazing relationship. Thanks to my dad's investment, I was able to start a business and get to be my own boss. I know I've had an easy ride, I don't deny it, but I've also worked really hard to make something of myself. That's why I don't date much. Sure, there are guys who ask me out regularly, but I'm confident most of the time it's because they notice the expensive car I drive or the fancy clothes I wear. How to know if they like me for who I am or are just looking for a sugar mama? I want someone who loves me for me, my personality, not my money, you know? It's hard knowing why a guy wants to take me out on a date, so I'm careful about who I agree to go out with, or at least that's what I thought. When I met Zach, I really believed he liked me. He seemed so sweet and genuine. What's more important, he made me laugh, and I love that in a guy. Our first date was absolutely amazing, and the first time he kissed me, I really felt butterflies in my stomach. I fell in love so fast, and now I understand that was his plan all along. Zach didn't come from money, and his job didn't pay too well. I didn't care about any of that, and perhaps I should have paid more attention to the warning signs. But what was I supposed to do? Only date rich guys? That isn't what I'm about. He was smart about it, you know. He didn't ask for anything at first. Zach played the waiting game. I'd invite him to lunch and he'd offer to pay, but I'd always refuse. Then I invited him over to my yacht and he brought beer and snacks to share, which I thought was sweet. When I wanted him to accompany me to a gala, he mentioned how he'd try and rent a fancy suit. He made a big deal about it, but I didn't realize anything was amiss at that time. I thought he was just trying to make an effort. I bought him a few nice suits instead, and that's when the slippery slope began. It grew so subtly, I didn't even realize it was happening. First, he asked for a big gift for his birthday. Fair enough, it was a special occasion. Then he told me a sob story about how he could not afford his apartment any longer. Bit by bit, I found myself paying for his every expense and taking him on shopping sprees. Over time, he began acting differently than he did at first, and he seemed to be obsessed with what I'd buy for him next. Zach always seemed to need something new, almost every week. It went from a PlayStation to a Rolex to a new car. He justified this massive expense, claiming he was embarrassed to meet my parents in his rusty old car. Like a fool, I fell for it. I bought him everything he asked. Eventually, he stopped asking for stuff and began outright demanding it. By then, it seemed so normal, I just went with it. Looking back, I can't believe I could have been so stupid, but he had me wrapped around his little finger. My delusion came to an end about a year after we started dating. I arrived home early from a trip, and Zach really wasn't expecting me to be there for at least another two days, so he was having a get-together with his friends, which was fine since we lived together. It was what I overheard that made me realize how much of a fool I was. Zach and his buddies were making fun of me. 
He was telling them all about how he was going to ask me to marry him, and then everything I had would be his as well. How I was too blind to realize he was using me for my money. How he was dating a bunch of other girls behind my back. Prettier girls, he said. I walked right out the door again, not ready to confront him in front of his friends. That very night, I returned to my home, and all hell broke loose. He cried his eyes out and told me he was just pretending to be so tough in front of his friends. Zach swore he'd make it up to me and that he loved me more than anything else in the world. I wasn't sure what to do next, and like a fool, I didn't break up with him immediately. But Zach was so convinced I would never leave him that only a week later, he asked me for some Gucci shoes. No, not asked, demanded I bought them for him. That was when I had enough. I dumped him right then and there, and Zach got nasty. He thinks I'll crawl back to him, but he's so wrong. I'm done with my gold digging ex-boyfriend. If you hate gold diggers, leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. Also, check out the other videos on the channel. See you next time. See you.